Pascal's triangle is this puzzle-like idea, and we may want to know how does this actually connect to mathematics and accounting in general. Well, in one regard, it applies to the expansion of polynomials. So our question is, how do I know what the value in the nth row will be? And we've defined n equals 0 to be the first row, n equals 1 to be the second row, and so on. You may actually recognize this as, as zero indexing, something that is common to languages like Python, where a list, the first element in the list is actually considered the zeroth element. There are lots of advantages to this, but we're not going to go into it quite yet until we see how mathematically we might be able to determine the coefficients in some arbitrary row. So in polynomials expansions, you might recall dealing with something like this, where the simplest value, or the simplest exponent to which I would raise the sum of two values would be one. And in this case, this is really just x plus y. And also another thing I could do before I even take x plus y to the first power is to consider x plus y to the zeroth power. And if you raise, assuming that these are not both zero, then raising something to the zeroth power is equal to the constant one. Okay, well one thing to notice already is that one, which is corresponds to an exponent of zero, happens to also be this first value in Pascal's triangle in the zeroth row. x plus y to the first power, if I put coefficients in front of x and y, then notice that both of those are ones. And oh gosh, that looks like those ones could be derived from the second row of Pascal's triangle. Well, this is not a proof because we've only looked at a couple of examples. If we took a look at x plus y squared, by definition, that is the product of x plus y and x plus y. Now be careful here because one of the common mistakes that we want to make here is we want to just take x squared and add it to y squared. But that's not valid because multiplying some quantity by itself is just that. It means multiply the quantity by itself. And the technique that gets applied here is we would have to use the distributive property and apply the foiling method or whatever you may have called that before. So in this case, I would get x times x, which is x squared, x times y, which is plus xy, y times x, which is the same thing as xy, and y times y, which is y squared. Now, if I combine like terms, I see that I have two copies of xy. I have one copy of xy here, one copy of xy here, and so I can further write this as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, where these coefficients are 1, and once again, it looks like this, these coefficients for the first and last terms are both ones, and then the inner term has a coefficient of two. So we're already beginning to think that there is some connection between expanding polynomials and Pascal's triangle. Just to be certain that we, we think that we're on the right track, let's do one more row before we try to create a convincing argument for how this works. So x plus y cubed, well, that's going to be x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. Now, so, so that we don't have to repeat this distributive process uh, a total of two times, I'm going to write this as x plus y squared times x plus y. So x plus y squared is namely just x plus y times x plus y, so I'm going to have three factors of x plus y in here. The reason I write it like this is because, um, and, and you know what, rather than to, rather than to show the x plus y squared here, I think what I'm going to do is I'll say this is x plus y times x plus y squared. Same thing, but it's going to help my expansion a little, a little bit more. So we already know what x plus y squared is. Well, x plus y squared is equal to this polynomial here, so I'm going to just go ahead and replace that with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And in this distributive process, we just have to make sure that x distributes across all three terms. 
So I'll have x times x squared, which is x cubed, plus 2x squared y, plus x times y squared. And now I'm going to work on the y term, y times x squared, y times 2xy, which will give me 2xyy, or 2xy squared. And then y times y squared, which will give me plus a y cubed. Now I'm going to combine like terms. I see that I just have this x cubed here, and I have this y cubed over here, both with coefficients of 1. And then I can start to work on the inner terms. I can see that here I have 2x squared y. And also I have yx squared. Now that's the same thing as writing 1x squared y. So if I have 2x squared y plus one more x squared y, that gives me 3x squared y's. And then also here I have an xy squared, and here I have two more xy squareds. So that gives me 3xy squareds. And you can see for this power of 3, if I look at the n equals 3 row, you can see that the coefficients here, 1, 3, 3, and 1, match the values of Pascal's triangle in row n equals 3. So we may be wondering, what is the intuition behind this? Why are these values taking place in this way? Well, I think we're ready to start to detect the pattern and see how we could actually use combinations to help us count the, uh, or rather calculate the coefficients of each of these three terms. And this is known as the binomial theorem, which we'll address next.